topic for today is Jesus is calling. Amen. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight to thirty. to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another day, Lord. Speak the blood upon us, Father God. You speak through me, may you find the devil in bondage. A fresh anointing in your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. It's kind of funny um, that scripture right there at the end where it says, My yoke is, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Back in the high school at Lakeview, they would tell us, Do it right, do it light. Do it wrong, do it long. Kind of like the same expression right here about the, um, at the home. Do it wrong, you're gonna do to get this plan. It's gonna keep on coming and keep on coming. Amen. <laughs> we got a bunch of bear crawls, up downs. You guys Jay right there. Amen. From our first point, it says, He knows you by name. See, Jesus notices when his child is lost. Sort of like when um you have like a lot of kids. Like my mom, she would lose me. I'd be like, Mom, where you at? Yeah, Walmart, just screaming, I'm crying and everything. But like, she'd be looking for me. And she'll eventually find me. <laughs> In Luke 15, 4 through 7, it says, What man among you, if he has lost a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does he not leave the 99 in the open pasture and go after the one which he has lost until he finds it? He notices when like you depart from him. He wants you always like in his presence. He always wants you um, in his light. Because when as soon as you go in the darkness, he's gonna he's gonna notice it, and something's gonna happen. He's gonna allow it, but he also does allow it when he, you're in his presence. Also, just to test your faith. Amen. Let me continue. Um, he finds it when he has found him. He lays it on his sho shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Amen? Just one of us, when we repent and we call up to God, he rejoices. There's, there's rejoicing in heaven just for that one lost soul. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He knows you well, so much that he um, that your hairs on your head are numbered, as says in Luke twelve seven. It says, "Indeed, your hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear; you will you are more valuable than many sparrows." You're more valuable than those 99 that have that say that they need no repentance. We all need repentance. We all need Jesus. If it's not, then what's the purpose of living? You know, we have to live because of Him. He lives through us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Understand is, but you have to understand that it's God's calling. Amen. Because we have to um, we have to know his voice. We have to know that it's right. If it's right, righteous, right standing with God, then we'll know that it's his voice calling us. Come back home. Amen. Okay. Ephesians five chapter five, seven through ten. Says, Therefore do not 
being partakers with them. Talking about sinners. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are in the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Amen? Because the Lord does know that the world is ran by the devil. Like, you know, the world, the world system ran by the devil. That's why there's so many sin out there. Amen? It's unfortunate, but we have to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Amen? That's a quick point. Amen? <laughs> now, my second point. There will be distractions. For one, there's idols. Amen? Like, coming with the sermon, I came up with it, like, I think it was Monday, I believe. I was listening to a song, and it just, boom, just came to me. Amen? But from Monday, Tuesday, and then today, I just had, I had distractions, like, just coming at me. Whether, like, I, I downloaded a little game on my phone. I've just been consistently on that phone. I mean, like, Jesus, like, I should be more in prayer and but now I was on my phone playing the game. See you. Amen. Um, in Exodus 20, chapter 23 through 4. And by the way, I'm reading, I'm reading off the New Man American Standard Bible. Amen. Exodus 23 through 4. You, ha you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol or likeness of what is in heaven, above or on earth, beneath or in water under the earth. Amen. That goes back to the, the phone. It might be yourself. You might like just get yourself in the mirror just all the time. Just checking out your outfit, you know. <laughs> Amen. Taking out some nice kicks. Nice shirt, you know. It's not not about the clothing. It's what's in you. Amen. The hours. It's what's in you. Amen. Now, Satan. Mm, he can. He can be a distraction. Amen. He can send other people to distract you and take you away from the light. Amen. So in 2 Corinthians it says, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Amen. So like, if it's not holy, if it's not righteous, then it's not God. It's not of God. Amen. So um, we must be righteous. We must understand his, that is his calling for us so that we can follow in his light. Amen. Be patient with it also. Because something might sound good, something might look good at one point, but then you just gotta wait for it and then it will reveal it. Amen. So if you ever see like an idol, or do you ever like or you think it's the angel of light? You give it patience, and then you might be like, you might thought it was it was right for a second, and you were caught up in it, caught up in the net. But I understand that we do fail, but he understands that he understands your heart. He knows your heart. Amen. We can't just like give in so easily. We have to fight every single day so we can be righteous with God. Amen. Because in um, Psalms 25, 15, my eyes are continually toward the Lord, for he plucked my feet out of the net. Amen. Jesus. Even for this sermon, I should have had this. How I always said, like now I'm looking at this sermon, like I really should have have prepared this for my last, my last um, 
my last uh, teaching, amen? But instead, I just waited until the very last second. Mm -hmm. See, it's going to be revealed when you're distracted and when you think you have everything figured out. Because I thought I did too. I thought like, yeah, I finally got up, up here. I finally start preaching to everybody, put myself on a high horse. But it was in the wrong direction. Amen. So I let myself slip. Because I had to rush this. I couldn't like put in the time, put in the patience as God has for us. He puts us through the home so he can form us. He can break us down. He can mold us into the righteous man that he wants us to be. And see, that's why I messed up. But God forgives, amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Because if not, we would not be here. We'd still be in the world. Through his grace. Amen. Yes, where I'm at. Amen. My third point. He had your destiny planned out. Jesus cares about your future. He cares so much about your future that he thought about your mother, thought about your father, and theirs as well. And um, what's one weird thing I was listening to this? Um, he's like a motivational speaker in the world. You know, just it was, um, it was strange because he said, and I looked it up on Google. Now this is scientists. So. It says, um, we were not born by accident. Wow. We were not born by accident, amen? Given the odds calculated by the scientists showing, scientists showing, the odds of you being born are at least one in 400 trillion. If not, one in 400 quadrillion. It's a pretty big number, amen? It's not about like 20 bucks. That much, you know. But, but no, God's is bigger. Amen? He had your destiny planned out from the beginning when he died on the cross for us. Amen? He thought about you. He thought about the struggles. Glory to glory. <coughs> Some people misinterpret the glory to glory. Because I saw something on Instagram. This guy said that he had... Um, he was in prayer, and God told him, give me your Instagram account. Trust me with your Instagram account. And so he did. He deleted it. He had like 50,000 followers. And he's also a pastor, big church, down the street. <clears throat> but he made another Instagram account. Amen? I understand that you want to preach the gospel. You want to give everybody, you know, sermon, you know, speak to everybody, but it's just, to me, it didn't, it didn't sound well, because I don't know if Jesus would ask you about Instagram, amen, but Jesus is mysterious, he works in mysterious ways, amen, <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus, thank you, Lord, so, in Jeremiah chapter 1, 5, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He seen you. He seen you in heaven. Probably playing around with the little kids. Amen? And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. See, he knew me back when I was out in the world. I began the world system back in 2016. Like, I was pretty out there. I didn't care about other people's feelings. I didn't care about other people's marriages. I didn't care about my own image. Well, the image that I wanted was like the, the world. Like all my homeboys like, oh man, you did that, you did that. But like, what's, what's the use? Amen? Because it's already in the past. You can't change the future. I mean, you can change the future. But you can't change the past. It's already done. Repent your sins. Move on forward. Get out of that pit. Thank you, Jesus. And now, when you get
get out of that pit. You just got to keep your eyes focused on God to get you out of the net. And so you can keep on moving forward. Amen. You, you need to find, you need to pray, you need to trust in the Lord that he will show you the way that, that he wants you to go. He has your destiny planned out because he had you planned out, right? And see, your your brothers and your or your sisters' destiny is not the same as yours. Because in John 22, 21, excuse me, John 21, 22, Jesus said to him, and he's talking to Peter. Jesus said to him, if I want him to remain until I come, what is it to you? You follow me. Amen. Don't be distracted of what other people are doing. Even if they are right, work, walking in righteousness, you don't want to be like them. He made you unique. He made you to be unique in your own way. Amen. And don't be and don't be worried about like how you're not moving as fast as somebody else. That you because your plan is something different. You might not be the pastor. You might be the home director. You might be the home director. You might be a leader. Amen. <coughs> Your destiny is planned out. Keep your eyes focused. Trust in Him, and He'll be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For I'll say, go back to the like, 2016 about me going being down bad back in Houston it seemed like I had like things figured out 2016 I was out in Houston going to college had a nice job I was about late Mercedes Benz you know pretty nice pretty nice job pretty good image of what I had and it took me a year to be the manager position for that for that for the ballet cement but I didn't have everything planned out. I knew that there was something missing, but I just never wanted to submit. I just wanted to be just going at it, going with the flow, everything will be fine. But I knew that there wasn't, everything wasn't fine. And see, just show you, just uh, show an example. It was like a good week to I really wasn't eating that well. I had to eat very little things because my mind was going straight to my, my drug addiction, alcohol, whatever. And so I planned to save my money for that. So I was at I was on lunch and they had like food trucks out there, right? And every every so often I'd go to the food truck, I, I like I'm buying something, I just like that just walk away, you know what I'm saying? Walk away, eat, and like go inside. Go like in the corner, just eat it. And um, it just came to that one that one day where I was just sitting there, I was looking at the, the food truck, and there was a lady. She just had her eye on me the whole time, time. She was looking at me. So there was no eating. And so I like I was tired of her looking at me, so I turned away, had my head down, I was tired. I was hungry. I was desperate. And so the bell was about to ring to go back to the to go back to school. And I know that this group of people that just left me, they're eating pizza. And they eat the crust. Amen. So they were done with it and they threw it in the trash. And I seen that, I was like, okay. Everybody went to class. I stayed a little after, I got that box from the trash, brushed it off, because there was like soda all over it. Started eating the, eating the crust from after somebody else's, like somebody else's trash, I was, I was eating it, amen? And I knew I was pretty desperate right there because I was eating trash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Broke you. But like right there, like yeah. 
broke me, man. I was like, holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> I'm this desperate, I'm this broke. Like, all my money's going to this. Are you serious, bro? Like, man. But who knows that the word of God is also a hunger. We all have a hunger for it. Yeah. So, in Matthew 4, 4, 4, when the devil was tempting Jesus because... Jesus went to fasting for like 40 nights and he was hungry. He was um, he was weak. And it says right here, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Amen. But on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen, Jesus. See, I wish I would have read that then. I probably would have been eating the Bible or something. I don't know, man. I was like, wow. I was just out there in the world. I just didn't make sense. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Um, stand with me, church, please. Yeah. See, the topic was Jesus is calling. Are you going to answer the call God has set out for you? One, because... He knows you by name. Two, have your eyes set on him because there will be distractions. Three, he has your destiny. Thank God. I give all the I give God all the honor and all the glory for giving me back in my life. Give like give me back in my path, Father God. Because I don't want to slip up again. I've been distant from the homeboys. I ain't gonna lie. I have been distant. Been revealed to me, but I plan to come back, come back in fellowship with y'all. Amen. 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 Cause I love you.